It's that time. It is Thursday night. Welcome back to the Love Lab. Time for Calabama cooking with your girl, Chef Lorius. Hello, hello. I have missed you guys. It's been so much has happened since the last time I was live. I'm just overloaded with information. I'm beyond excited. Everything is good. We got Facebook running. We got Instagram, I think. Richard's looking kind of cross-eyed. I think we got Instagram up too. Instagram-ish. Okay. Well, we at least got Facebook. Hey, Facebook. <laughs> They're trying to fix it. You guys, thank you so much for being with me tonight. Calabama cooking. We did it, fam. We have introduced Calabama cooking to the world. A world, Craig, of the world. <laughs> Top flight. You guys, this has been so exciting. The book launch has been absolutely amazing. If you have not ordered the book yet, if you have not, or if you heard any little deep mumbling just then, that was Richard talking. He His whisper game is a little off. He got that little mumbling. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Anyway, if you haven't got your book, look at this. Here it is, Calabama Cooking, Classic and Contemporary Comfort Food. Order your copy. There's still time to get them by Thanksgiving if you order. All right, so hurry up and get those orders in. There's stuff in here that you can make for Thanksgiving. 7-Up Cake is in here. You know everybody wants 7-Up Cake. Sweet potato pies in here, macaroni and cheese, all the good stuff right here. Calabama Cooking with Chef Lori's. All right, so order your cookbook, guys. Tonight, we're going to make some stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all you know, know Shane told me what to do. Put it, he said, put it back up here. Okay. Is that right? Did I do it right? Did I do it right now? Woo, woo. Okay. The guys, tonight we're making some classics for Thanksgiving. I'm making two things tonight I have never made on a video before. So this is the world premiere <laughs> on Calabama cooking of a couple of Thanksgiving classics. So shout out to cities and states. Share the video, please hit share on this video because we got to keep working fam. We can't, we can't, you know, like slow down. Like we got to really get it going. I hope you saw my segment on Hallmark Home and Family. Y'all, we was on national TV. We was on the TV, y'all. I made my chocolate bread pudding with Irish cream, whisk, Irish whiskey caramel cream sauce. It is amazing. It's really good. I ain't lying. It's good. And you guys, it was so much fun. I was in Hollywood and it was everything. It was everything. And I went back to my hometown, Sacramento. I love y'all, Sacramento. My hometown loves me, and I love y'all, too. I was on Good Day, Sacramento. Went to Williams-Sonoma, signed books, cooked some food, hugged some necks, kissed some babies. Y'all know how I do. <laughs> it was great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Thanksgiving is upon us. Let me get the phone going. Let me know your cities and states because, I mean it, I could be in your city. I was in Sacramento. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Tell me where you are because I got to go where the people want me. All right, fam, we are going to make candy sweet, candy yams. I started to say candy sweet potatoes. You can call them candy sweet potatoes. You can call them candy yams, whatever you want to. We're going to make them tonight. I love candy yams. This is one of my favorites for th Thanksgiving and for the holidays. And uh, somebody said, what office am I running for? Why? Because I'm kissing babies. That's just what I do. <laughs> and Hungry Preacher, I see you. I'm hoping... You got your books. I signed it to the hungry preacher. <laughs> All right, y'all. Here we go. We are going to make some candied yams, okay? I've never made these before. I've made them, but I've never made a video with candied yams. So this is kind of cool. All right, here we go. We're going to start with two yams, okay? Now, this is important. When you're making candied yams, you want to get the ones that when you, my grandmama taught me this, okay? When you pinch it a little bit, it should just be that plain color okay if you pinch your yam and you see that little purple line in there you don't want that because as my grandma used to say those are not the pretty yams okay we don't want no ugly yams we want pretty yams okay now what we're gonna do i put the peeler now i sat here this <laughs> like i sat here got it. we're gonna peel these all you gotta do use a potato peeler okay you can use a mandolin to cut these or you can even peel them with a paring knife or something like that if you want to I'm a little leery sometimes with a paring knife because, you know, it just feels like something's going to go real wrong. Because sweet potatoes, um, they're harder than regular potatoes. I'm, I'm sure y'all know. Now, you can cut them with a mandolin, but again, I'm not trying to hurt myself. And when I start fooling around with mandolins, I can do okay with it. But every now and then, y'all, something go wrong and I end up with a cut finger and it is just not okay. So I'm going to show you how to do this with just a good knife, okay? So you see here, you just want to peel it. See, it peels really easily. It's not as hard as anybody's thinking, okay? And again, this is not like, now when I'm making sweet potato pie, I like to roast 
the potatoes first. For candied yams, I don't. I've done it that way though, where you know some people cook them first and get them a little soft and then cut them. You really don't have to do that. You just gotta take your time. See here, see how easy these are peeling? And get your potato peeler. This is just the best thing ever. I love this thing. It'll make you make stuff more frequently than you would have planned on making it. I hope that made sense. This recipe will be in my next cookbook, which I have already started working on because I just love writing recipes and sharing it with y'all. Okay, here we go. So, see how I did that? Real nice and easy. And this is a must for your Thanksgiving table. You gotta have candied yams. You gotta have them. Now, some people cook these all on the stove. My mama and my grandmama didn't do that. So I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying my mama and my grandmama didn't do that. I'm gonna show you how they did it. So, see how I did that? Take the peelings, boom, done, clean. All right. Now we're gonna cut these yams up. Now when you cut your yams, get a good knife. This is that Chef Club knife. You guys remember this? I did a review on these knives. These are really good knives and they're pretty. So start cutting. You don't wanna cut them too thick. You can cut them long way like that. I like to cut them this way. And you wanna go about a quarter of an inch. See that? And see with a good knife how easy this is to cut? Cause sweet potatoes, have some thickness to them and they're firm, but cut them even. See that? That's really all you need. You don't wanna get them real thick and, and gunky because the thicker they are, the longer it will take them to cook and they won't quite taste like you want them, I don't think, okay? Now, as you're cutting your sweet potato, because it's an imperfect vegetable, it's a root vegetable, you're gonna have to kind of turn it a little bit as you go to get to the flat sides and just do your best to cut it even. You can always use a mandolin. Okay, a mandolin works. I'm just not particularly interested in messing up my hands. I gotta go on TV tomorrow, y'all. I don't need to have no band-aids on. <laughs> there, okay, that's one. And we're gonna cut the other one. And you might be thinking, why just two? Well, you'd be surprised when you finish cutting this up. It's gonna go a long way, okay? See this? And I'm not even using my big cutting board. Maybe I should be, this one's a little wobbly. Look at that. Okay, and see how I'm going down and under and over like this? So I'm going down and over. That's preventing me from cutting myself <laughs> and just getting a nice, and this lets me get a nice clean cut. Good knife. All right, fam? Okay, there we go. Now, we've got that part done. Okay, now this is how my mama taught me. My mama knows what she's doing. You're gonna take equal parts of brown sugar and white sugar. I like to do about a cup of each, anywhere between three quarters of a cup to a cup of each, and mix them together. Some people just use brown sugar. My mom, actually, you know what? This isn't fully how my mama told me. I told a story. My mama just uses white sugar. I like brown sugar because I like the drippiness of the flavor of the molasses that's in brown sugar, because you know that's all brown sugar is, is white sugar with molasses, right? So you see that? Okay, then, you're gonna take your seasoning. This is just the general, I like just using this fall seasoning. This is a combination of cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, cloves, allspice, all of those good things that say Thanksgiving and fall are all in this jar. And depending on how much you like, I put about a tablespoon in because I actually like the seasonings. If you really wanna stick more just to the candy sweet, then just use a little bit or use none at all, okay? Just like that, okay? And then we're gonna put just a pinch of salt, a little pinch of salt because it helps, remember? Just a dash, there you go, don't need a ton. It's not a salty dish, but that's gonna help these flavors really come to life for you, all right? Mix it up so it looks just like this, okay? Now you're gonna start a layering project. Arts and crafts time. First thing you're gonna do is lay potatoes in your first layer. You see this, y'all? They don't have to be perfectly flat. I mean, they can be. It's really not that serious, okay? It's, I promise you, it's not that serious. Now see, this one I think is still a little too thick, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna risk my finger. This is how folks cook at home for real, y'all know it. Y'all be doing the same thing at home I'm doing right now. Everybody wanna act fancy and brand new, I'm not brand new. That's how we cook for real, boom. Okay, so here we go. I said to my mama, how much do you put on there? She said, yeah, that much. <laughs> so, okay, that much. You're gonna take it and just sprinkle. Just like this, okay? Don't worry if you have some little clumps in your sugar. It's okay. It is just fine, okay? And then you're gonna take the butter and put just a little couple pieces of butter 
on each layer, just like that. And then go back and start again. Okay, see this is, I mean, this is really, candy sweet potatoes are so easy to make. My kids love them all year round. You know, candy, candy yams is a Sunday dinner food. And all that's gonna happen with this sugar is it's going to form a wonderful syrup that's gonna cook with these yams. And can I tell y'all something I've done before? That's, I mean, now this is one of my secret tips. You sugar these yams up like this the night before Thanksgiving, cover it with foil and let them sit. This will, the, the moisture in the potatoes will draw out the sugar, the water from the, um, you know, it'll get moist, okay? That's what I'm just gonna say. And you will find that the syrup will start to form and oh my goodness, it will be amazing. Butter, see here? Real simple, arts and crafts. One more here, one more here. Just filling in the spaces now with what's left just like so. And you know what I like about these traditional dishes? They don't have a whole lot of ingredients, you know? You just have the food and you cook it. And if you have some sugar left over, that's okay. Really, it's okay, I promise you. Nothing's gonna go wrong. And if you're thinking to yourself, that is too much sugar. This is how we Thanksgiving in the South, okay? This is how we do it. Can I get, anybody out there from the Deep South know that this is how we Thanksgiving? Hands up, please. Give me a hand raise. This is how we Thanksgiving in the South. With sugar and sweet potatoes and butter. <laughs> okay? Now, <laughs> I'm looking for those hands up. That's right. Come on, y'all. Now, you're going to put a little bit of water in here to create some steam. Okay? Not a lot of water. This is literally, right here, just a quarter cup of water. That is all you need. Thank you, Roger. said so that's the Alabama way. That's what we do. This is how we Thanksgiving down South. I told y'all my folks was from the country. Now, to this water, this is, again, just a quarter cup. Do not repeat. Do not use too much water because you will get soggy yams. All you need is a little bit of water to create some steam to help the yams get soft, okay? Now, in here is homemade vanilla. Yeah, y'all, look, I've been steeping this vanilla since uh, July. And you just, I can tell you how to do that. You just need a whole bunch of beans, vanilla beans, and vodka. Anyway, that's another story. But it tastes amazing. I'm going to put, see there? Look at that. That's homemade. Ooh, it smells good. It can be as strong as you want it. That's all I did was two tablespoons in there. And you can do less if you want less vanilla. I like vanilla. And you're just going to pour it around the edges. And it doesn't have to all go in. This is, again, not an exact science. Just enough to get some steam created. That's it. No more water. No more water. Okay? Next thing. And somebody said that's how they do it in Mississippi too. Thanksgiving is the best holiday around. Take you some foil. Or as my husband calls it, tin foil. Because, you know, Virginia is the South. Don't let them fool you. You're going to cover this nice and tight. Okay? This is important. Cover it nice and tight. And cook these in the oven on about 350 degrees, 325, 350, for about 45 minutes, okay? You gotta give it time because the steam is gonna create and it's gonna cook down and candy it. Keep it covered. If you don't keep it covered, I've made this mistake, it will take forever and they will never be quite as soft as you want them. Keep it covered, foil tight. And in about 45 minutes or so, you will be met with this. Now, I don't know if y'all can still see the steam, but you see that? Look at that. And I want you to see how soft these are. This is how you, ooh, ooh, sorry, Instagram. You see how this goes through there? You see that syrup that got created? You see that? That's what you want. That's a candy yam. It's not too watery. It's just syrup. You see how they're still firm? See that? And you get you a skewer or something, as long as you can stick it through. The potatoes aren't falling apart. You don't want them falling apart. That's why you don't just make them super thin, but you also don't want them to be this big. You know what I'm saying? So, let's taste them. This is the best part. Oh, man, I love Thanksgiving. I love candy yams. And see, look, this is how you eat them. You get in here, and then you get this juice. You see that juice right there? That's butter, vanilla, goodness. Oh, oh. and you see, oh, y'all, it's, it's Thanksgiving. I'm just going to try one because I'm trying to be really good, sort of. That is what a candy yam supposed to taste like. That. If you're wondering 
What is the yam supposed to taste like? This right here. This right here. I said it like that on purpose. Shane's going to tell me I'm not speaking properly. But y'all understand me. This right here. You get the greens. And you know when that pot liquor. Stop, Shane. I'm talking to my people. When that pot liquor from the greens and the juice from the yam start getting together on the plate. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And you get the, the cornbread. Woo! All right. Let's move on. Y'all, I'm excited. I wasn't even like overly Thanksgiving because I've been running so much with the cookbook. But let me tell you something. This right here then got me in the mood. Ha! Okay. Let me let me put it this way. It's still kind of hot. I've been now I've been cooking so much till you know how your grandma and them hands didn't even feel heat no more. They could touch stuff and you're like, isn't that hot? And they were like, no baby, I done turned into that. I don't know. Pray for me. Okay. Next we're gonna make some good old fashioned dressing, y'all. Now I have made some dressings before. <sighs> I made sausage and mushrooms. The cookbook has a really good sausage dressing in it. But I'm gonna show y'all how to just make good old traditional cornbread dressing. Because it has come to my attention that y'all out there buying packages of little breadcrumbs. I'm not calling no names. But dressing starts with one of these. You know what this is? Mm -hmm, that's homemade cornbread. That's how dressing is supposed to start. Now, in fairness, I have used the breadcrumbs too. So I'm not going to totally disown you for it because in a pinch, your sister has done it herself. <laughs> All right, first thing we're going to do for the dressing. We're going to start by melting some butter here, okay? This butter is going, and I'm going to add to it the goodies, the onions, bell pepper, and celery, the trinity. This is the holy trinity of Southern cooking, right, y'all? All right, let me see. Somebody said with corn in it. No, I don't put corn. I usually do put corn actually in my cornbread, but not when I'm making dressing. Now, I might say dressing, I might say stuffing. If I say stuffing, it's because I'm trying to be accommodating because the stuff is called dressing. But I don't know, what are you guys on? Let me know, hashtag team dressing or team stuffing? Hashtag team dressing or hashtag team stuffing? Let me know. Oh, someone said their father-in-law made good dressing. He passed away a year ago. I'm so sorry for your loss. The holidays are always hard, especially these that are just the, the come-together ones, you know? But let me know, y'all, team dressing or team stuffing. I'm team dressing. And you're going to start, look at this. See, you're just going to let this start cooking up in this butter, okay? Now, I put about a half a stick of butter in here. Let this start. Dressing is easy to make. Don't fool yourself, okay? Dressing is not hard. <clears throat> Okay, you're gonna let that start coming together. Now, while that's doing that, it's gonna come over to this cornbread and I'm gonna start breaking it up. Now, what's a good idea is when you make your cornbread for Thanksgiving for your dressing, make it the night before and just put a paper towel loosely over it and it'll dry a little bit. Now, if you were just gonna eat this cornbread, it would be less than desirable because it would be a little dried out, but for dressing, that's okay. Now, here we go. This is what you do. You think I'm, de I'm just desecrating the dressing, huh? The stuff, the cornbread. <laughs> but this is what you want to do. Okay? You literally want to just break it up. Just like so. And I put it in a separate bowl. Just like this. This is really what you want to do. Team dressing. I see y'all. That's me. Team dressing. I I'll say stuffing though. But it's dressing. But I'll say stuffing. <laughs> see how I'm breaking this up? Again, you don't have to make it be breadcrumbs, but you want it to be broken up. There we go. There we go, y'all. Look at this. Now, tomorrow I'm going to be on Fox 5 here in D.C., fam, and I put out a poll to see what you guys wanted me to cook on Instagram and Facebook. And the, the options were macaroni and cheese, sweet potato pie, and the first option had dressing on it. And dressing came in third place. That doesn't mean it didn't have a lot of votes. It meant it had the fewest votes. So I'm not going to be doing that one tomorrow on Fox 5, but you don't know which one I am going to do on Fox 5. So you're going to have to watch and see or watch the segment. All right, I'll definitely post it for you. Look at this. Look at that. See how I'm doing that? This is cornbread dressing. This is the real deal. Okay, y'all, I'm at home, so don't talk about me. Okay, I'm at home. 
This is how y'all do it at home too. We try to be fancy when we're cooking on camera. So nobody says, cause you know, invariably somebody writes a comment. Ew, she just used her hands. I'm in my house. Yes, I use my hands. See that? The hardest part to this is when I make it, the kids want to come and eat the pan of cornbread. <laughs> but you know, I usually put a little sugar in cornbread too when I make it. But when I do it for dressing, I don't put that much in there because you're really going for savory at this point. See here? See there? Look at that. That's how you start dressing. And just break up any big pieces you see. All right? Done. Now back over here to our veggies. Can you see this, guys? We are just sauteing these in some butter and we're going to add some seasoning. We're going to add some sage. I love sage, people. I'm going to use this and put about a tablespoon in. I am positive there will be more in before I'm done. Oops. <laughs> and this is poultry seasoning, which also has sage in it, but it also has just some other good seasonings that work well with poultry as well. So we're going to go with about a tablespoon of each of these to start with, and we have three cups of these chopped vegetables. Now, the beauty of current day stuff, I'll be honest, is you can go to the grocery store and thank you, Jesus, they will chop up that stuff and sell it to you in a package so you don't have to spend the whole night chopping celery, bell peppers, and onions. Woo! Oh, my husband told me to turn the fan on. And you know why I forgot? Because it smells like Thanksgiving, y'all. You see this? You see how this is coming together? Look at it. Look at that. O-M-G. I'm going to add some more of this little butter over here left over from these yams. Because they'll soak it up. And I'm going to put a little bit more sage in there. Now this is how you start cooking for real. <laughs> and we're going to hit it with some salt. I told you, you don't need a whole lot of seasonings for good Thanksgiving food. Okay. Oh. <laughs> do you smell that? Do you, do you, you smell that, y'all? You smell it? Oh, Lord, it's Thanksgiving. Oh, now you don't have to cook this till it's soggy, okay? But you want to just get it nice and soft. I think it needs to be a little softer. And what we're going to do, somebody said butter makes everything better. Yes, Lord, you know, you know I got a stick of melted butter to pour in because you need fat. That's a question people ask a lot of times, and we'll be talking about that tomorrow on Fox's. If you have dry dressing, what do you do if your dressing is dry? Well, I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> Wait a minute, what are you telling me, Shane? Who's there celery? Ce yes, there's celery. Is he asking? Oh, somebody asked what's in the Trinity. Celery, bell pepper, and onions. That is the Southern Trinity of sauteing. Okay, this is just like we like it. You see that? Because you want the vegetables. You want to taste of something. You know what I mean? We're not trying to totally desecrate the whole thing. Now we are going to mix our dressing up. We're going to take these vegetables and we're going to put them in with the cornbread. Now you can do it one of two ways. You can put the cornbread in here or you can put this in there. It don't matter. It, it don't matter. Not it doesn't. It don't matter. Okay. For today's class, <laughs> I'm going to put the vegetables in here. Okay. Just like so. Oh yeah. Okay. Ooh, burn my finger for a second. Touch the hot part of the skillet. Okay. Now, ooh, that skillet got a little hot part under there. I don't see right there. Now you see here. I'm just gonna start mixing this together. Look at that. Look at that. Boom. This is how easy it is to make dressing, y'all. And if you want more vegetables, cook more vegetables. Okay. That's up to you. I just did. Uh, I literally just did three cups. Okay. Because I like the cornbread in there. Now, looks dry, right? Here's what happens. We're going to start with chicken broth. Now, I've got about five cups of chicken broth here. I don't think I should not need all of it, but I might. It honestly kind of comes down to what's happening that day and the air in your kitchen. I know, I hate when people say that because I'm like, what does that mean? Well, it means that there is actually moisture in the air, and it really depends on how the air is in your home. That's why when you're making pies and pie doughs and things like that, It'll say use six to 10 tablespoons or this, because you gotta feel how it is coming together. This is straight chicken broth. We're gonna start pouring. Okay, like so. Now I usually start slow. The reason I say start slow is because you don't want to overwhelm it, all right? If you overwhelm it and then you just have a whole bunch there, you wanna pour it in, give it a chance to soak up, stir it around, see there? 
little bit more. You don't want dry dressing. Okay? Dry dressing mess up everything. My dressing be so moist, I don't even have to have gravy. I have gravy because I want it. Not because it's dry. You know that's why people put so much dressing, gravy on their dressing because it be dry. Y'all know, right? Okay. Look, see how this is moist? You don't want to have a puddle of water. Okay? It's a puddle of broth. But you see that? See how it's starting to, it's moistening up? That's what you want. And then we're going to take this whole stick of butter because it can be moist but still have a dryness to it. That's fat. Pour that whole stick of butter in there. Don't get scared and don't say, ooh, a whole stick of butter. Yes, baby. Yes. Yes. A whole stick. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see the dress and smile when I put that stick of butter in there? It's it. <laughs> oh, yes, you're, you're telling me something. Why didn't you put sausage? Can you put sausage in it? Yes. You can put sausage in here. You can put mushrooms in here. Some folk, anybody know about oyster dressing? You put oysters in here too. Some people do oyster dressing. You can do anything you want. This is just the basis of how you start a good cornbread dressing. And you see it even looks better than that stuff with the, with the thing that be sitting at the store. The packages and stuff. Now, now, now people have different views of what to do here. I taste my dressing at this stage because I want to see what I'm working with. Oh my God. Every now and then you hit the ball out the park the first time. You know like the Nationals when they won the World Series? <laughs> okay, I had to say that. That stuff right there, y'all. Ooh. I mean, I did that right. Oh, my God. I don't need to do nothing else to it. And I want you to see the moisture content. You see this? Look, I'm going to show you with this. You see this? You see how you can see that it's moist? You can see the liquid in it? If you push it a little bit, you can see it comes up some, but it's not swimming in it, okay? That's very important. This is so delicious. This is my favorite thing, I think, for Thanksgiving is a dressing. Now, what I like to do in our family, some people serve it just like this. It is technically done, okay? That's fine. What we do in my family, oh, and you see, we only ended up using about three cups of our, water, of our broth. That's all we needed. Start with more than you need. You can always mess up. Now, side comment. If you happen to accidentally put too much broth in there and it gets soupy, that's when you need that little pack of cornbread, them, them packets from Pepperidge Farm. Put that in there to fill it back out. <laughs> okay. Have that for emergencies. All right. Now, in my family, some people like to put their dressing in the turkey. I don't stuff my stuff in there because we fry our turkey, so that wouldn't work. But if you do, you can put it in the turkey, whatever. I, I'm not, I don't know how to do all that. But... I like to cook my dressing in the oven. So I will add about three to four eggs to this and put it in the oven and let it cook up. But I stop here because I want you guys to see that this is actually, it's, it's actually done. Some people really stop right here and they're done and it is done. There's not, I mean, it's good too. And you can eat it just like this. You know, that's, that's the old top stuff you fluff up and everything. You, you can do that. But I advise that you put some eggs in here and put it in the oven and have, oh, I'm gonna put a little bit more here, taste some more. I love dressing. I'm gonna pull. I don't even have words, y'all. <laughs> Did y'all see that? <laughs> I hope you didn't. If you did, just act like you didn't. All right, fam. Remember? Get your cookbook. Still time to order it and get it. Okay, hold on. Someone asked, what do the eggs do? The eggs help to stay together when you bake it. You don't have to have them in there. But if you put the eggs in, as it bakes, they'll stay together, hold together a little bit. See, now, Travelle, your grandmama and my grandmama both put eggs in their dressing. Because <laughs> our grandmamas were sisters. <laughs> anyway, guys, get your cookbook. Calabano Cooking, Classic and Contemporary Comfort Food. Be sure to watch tomorrow morning on Fox 5, where you will find out which dish won out. Am I going to show you how to make macaroni and cheese? or sweet potato pie. I will definitely post a link for those of you who aren't local so you can see it as well. Order your cookbook, go to cheflorious.com. It will have every, all the information there. Click the buttons, order it. You still have time, you will get it by Thanksgiving. Order, order, order. I love you guys, fam. I will not see you next Thursday night because it's gonna be Thanksgiving. We're gonna be chowing down. Hold on, Jay. Oh, local people, Sunday, this Sunday, I'm gonna be at Williams-Sonoma in Mosaic. We will have a cooking demo and a cookbook signing. So if you're local and you haven't got your book, 
Come on out to Williams Sonoma on Sunday at one o'clock. We'll be there from one to three. Mosaic District. That's the one in Fairfax, kind of like near um near like Tyson's ish. Kind of Mosaic. Okay. So come out and see me one to three on Sunday. I'll be signing books, cooking up a demo, handing out stuff for you guys to try. Love you so much. Hold on. Oh, Shana said, reminded me of everything, y'all. I've been so busy. Okay, last thing, I promise. On Thanksgiving, I filmed a special with Fox 5 for Thanksgiving. So, um, they, uh, you know, like we did for Memorial Day, kind of, where they feature different things. I'm on their special for Thanksgiving morning with Fox 5. Please tune in and watch it. I will send out a reminder as well if you're local, and I'll post it for all of you who are worldwide. I'm everywhere. I'm going to be on TV tomorrow. I'll be at Williams-Sonoma on Sunday. I'll be back on TV Again, uh, you'll see me Thanksgiving morning on Fox, but I won't be there. We already recorded. I'm going to be at home eating. I love you. Order your cookbooks. See you guys. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Happy cooking.